My Lords, to what problem is this specific bill a remedy? We already have strong and effective laws against quackery and mis-selling, against coercion and control, and, of course, against harassment and physical abuse. Some of them are ancient common law guarantees. Some of them are legislative. The 1986 Public Order Act uh, defines harassment in a way that I think would cover the concerns raised by most of the supporters of the legislation in this debate. The 2015 Serious Crimes Act deals with coercion and control within families. So I am bound to ask, is this bill a proportionate remedy to an identified problem, or is it a way of sending a signal? Is it a way of, if you like, a, a form of declaratory legislation? And if it's the latter, then it opens the door to all manner of unintended consequences. Yeah. I suppose I ought to add, because we live in an age when people often struggle to distinguish general principles from the specific case, that I've always been something of an outlier in pushing for gay equality. When, my, uh, when the noble Lord, Lord Moore of Etchingham, was against Section 28, I was a teenager, but I was strongly in favour of it. In fact, in favour of it even when it started life as Section 27, which some of you will remember uh, that it did before being amended in legislation. I then went on in the 90s to be, again, very unusually as a Conservative, uh, uh, an outlying supporter of civil partnerships and of the equalisation of the age of consent. I was, in fact, working at the time for the noble Lord, uh, the Lord Moore of Etchingham. I was a leader writer uh, at the Daily Telegraph, and he is the politest and most civil of men, so he didn't uh, show by any sign that he thought that I was a complete lunatic, but I could tell, nonetheless, courteous as he is, that he thought I was quite an extremist on the subject. Nonetheless, I stand by what I thought then, partly because equality before the law is an important principle, but mainly because privacy and the recognition of a private space and the dignity of individuals is a key principle, whether we're talking about gay people or whether we're talking about people with religious convictions. What they do is their business unless it becomes harassment or coercion of somebody else. The, uh, the way in which Baroness Burt introduced this bill by saying we don't want to... Uh, <coughs> trample on free speech, but we do want to prevent these abuses, that, it seems to me, is exactly where the law stands now. And so, before rushing to legislate further, we need to ask, have we exhausted every existing remedy? Are there cases, and we, we heard some lurid stories from Lord Cashman about, you know, electric shock, shock therapy and so on, there is no, I've never heard any suggestion that that is happening in this country. Are we legislating against something that doesn't happen in order to send a signal? Because if we are, then that is almost the definition of laws that have unintended consequences. My Lords, legislation should be our last resort, not our first. How, how did Tacitus put it? Uh, corruptissima republica plurimae leges. The more rotten the state, the more laws it passes. I believe with our former member, the third Viscount Falkland, that if it is not necessary to legislate, it is necessary not to legislate. Yeah. Yeah.